Hi, welcome to my coffee time. I hope you are going to join me tulip with your coffee or tea. So today is the April 27th, 2020. And this day holds a big memory for me. The memory of reaching Bangladesh my home country after almost a month of journeying across Pakistan literally by foot and memories are some are sweet but this one hits me every April like a giant wave in the sea that splashes and crashes against the rocks and sprays out in white foam back to its sea, the mother, but the waves that leave the water behind, these are like my memories. They come and go, but at the same time, I'm so thankful that after a, what could have been the end of a life, have carried me through to this day when I can tell you my story. So when Bangladesh gained its independence in 1971, 16 December is our victory day, it had waged into nine month long war against the West Pakistani forces. At that time it was the East Pakistan and the West Pakistan. So we were the East Pakistanis stranded in Pakistan at that time because my father was working and the West Pakistan wasn't being fair to the people of East Pakistan in more than 100 days, socially, economically, and they were even taking our language away. So the Bangladeshis rose to protest, which culminated into the war of independence. So I was in grade nine then, and my family, my parents, and my only brother, we got stuck in the Western wing after Bangladesh became independent in 1971. We stayed at home. This COVID-19 days reminds me so much of those times when we were stuck home. We didn't have schools, no office for my father, no going out. Literally, we stayed home. It wasn't too safe to go out because at that time, it was like in living in the enemy land because Pakistan was waging. The Western wing was against our independence. So we stayed home speculating our future, what would happen then around uh, January of 1973, almost two years after our liberation in 1971, the Pakistani government started gathering civilians, that is my father, who was a civilian government service, into camps. At that time, my father and many other Bengalis who were stuck there decided to escape and we took the way in which we had to pay for our fare and pay the smugglers who carried goods across the border to carry us across Pakistan to Afghanistan. So in the morning of a week of April 1973, 
we started from our home pretending to be going to the hospital and like a movie we were told that when you reach the hospital you wait for 20 minutes and then come out there will be a car waiting for you and with the numbers certain numbers we are given for the number plate so we went to the hospital and after 20 minutes as directed we went out and found the car waiting with that particular number plate so we started our journey meanwhile in the other car was the family of uncle ali and his children we were starting together but not in the same car as soon as the car was ready we were settled my father in the front me in the middle my mother on one side my brother on one side the car started we didn't have a chance to ask the driver who was already inside anything else and before that in fact we have been directed by the smugglers who had arranged our scheme that we were not to ask any questions but to follow apart from health or food no identity questions for the safety of us all by the end of the day we reached the borders of the northwest frontier it was then and we were about to cross into that region when I saw from the, my point where I was sitting in the middle, the road was clear, a place that called was written check post. I was watching and I saw two guards who had guns with them signal us to stay. Stop. So our driver slowed the car and almost when it was around maybe 100 and or 200 feet away he stopped so the guards had to put their guns on the back on the shoulder and started walking towards us just then all of a sudden our driver pushed the gas pedal full so we just literally jumped up and I was looking at the back and I saw one of the guards lift the gun to shoot at us. For the first time I heard the driver's voice, head down, he said, and I drove down. When I was up and we were still running, I knew we were alive. The first excitement but trust me, it wasn't the sound of music where the family was escaping in real, real life. And so this began the first day of the journey. It's a long journey and it's going to be quite difficult to tell it all. But I will mention two more incidents along that journey before we reached our homeland on this very day, 27th, April 1973. Around the third or oh, second week of our journey, we were caught by a group of rebel villagers they took us the whole gang of the people who were escaping we were by then around 47 of us and put us in a huge room or a barn like place all the men on one side and the women on the other side women and children that is and they had a huge bonfire 
money in between where men with turbans and knives and guns sat smoking hookahs and laughing and talking away. I thought that was the end. I mean, they were planning to kill us. It was night time and towards the dawn, we stayed there trying to understand what's going to happen to us. Towards the dawn, the men folk were taken out one by one. I saw my father being taken and started to cry. I didn't know if he was coming back. As we waited, after a long time, all the men folk were brought back. And we learned that they have had to give their watches and the money for ransom so that this um, enemy tribe would let us continue on our journey. So the women who were all wearing, you know, gold bangles and earrings started to open them up to give them to the our captors. But the captors, when we, they offered the gold, said, no, no, no. Zananako Nailenge Wo Mata hai Ma hai It was so amazing that they didn't want to take gold from women because they are the mothers. I learned a lesson. Yes, those men likelihood might be smuggling, but they had some ethics, some respect for women which even many civilized societies don't have. That is one incident. And the other day, we were crossing the two mountains around the second week when we were on the top of some horse-like things maybe donkeys, but I was also one of, on one of them and feeling rather happy because I had wanted to ride horses all my life and this was the first time I was in the back of something that looked like a horse. Towards the, it was very hot and towards the afternoon, we were out of water. We were 47 in the group by then because other Fleeing Bengalis have joined our group and we had small children who were crying because we didn't have any water. At that time, we were supposed to be following the guides to the right side, but my donkey started going to the left side, up the mountain, other donkeys following. So when we reached the top, the donkey dug into the sand and as I watched, water poured in into the little tiny hole the donkey has created. First it was a bit muddy, then the soil settled back in no time and there was clear spring water. I fell on the floor, on the sand and drank. I watched my donkey drinking beside me looking at me, aha, uh -huh. you call yourself humans. So, we are saving your life. Yes, the donkeys that they saved our life, we would have truly perished if we didn't have water. We didn't have water and we couldn't go to any villagers anywhere nearby because Pakistani government had announced a big money for every Bengali that was caught on the way while we were journeying to our motherland. So this will be all for today, but I would like you, my dear viewers, if you wish to go to the website immersedcollective.org true life story contest winner flight to motherland and read the full story there
I wish I could tell the whole story, but the time is always a factor. And no time before I think we realized how much we can really do when we wish to do, right? How can I thank Amherst Media that I'm running my show, recording at home and sending them. And Faith Gregory, who is always there to help me out. And thanks to Jody Jenkins, who took the story and published in the Amherst Collective, True Life Story Contest. Till we meet again, stay safe. Once again, the web site to check for my real life story contest is amherstcollective.org true life story contest winner fly to motherland i hope you can find it and read it thank you for being there thank you amherst media and it's great team